Hey, hi everyone. My name is Vishal, and welcome back to the part thirteen of the Snowflake Zero to Hero series. In this video, we are going to talk about the copy into location. In the last video, I have mentioned the copy into tables. Means we have been taking a data from the stages and then dumping into the tables, and we have seen so many of parameters. If I, if you have gone through with the videos, you have seen it on error, force, purge, match by column name, include metadata, and so many things. There we have taken like multiple stages and dumped into a tables depending on the kind of a situations. So if you haven't watched the video, then make sure you are going to follow that. Now in this one, we are going to do the reverse. Means I'm going to take the data from the tables and then going to dump into the stages. Okay, so the syntax is going to be similar. You just need to reverse the places like copy into stays from the table name. But one thing which is going to be different is the parameters. Now here you will be seeing few other parameters which is not into the copy into table. So let's just see that into the action. Okay, I'll come to my snowflake here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new tab. This is copy into stays. Okay, so I'm quickly going to take my YouTube learning and the raw layered schema. Here, if I look at it, what I do have, so stages, I would be having a couple of stages here. Okay, I can see the three stages. So what I'm going to do is I am going to first remove everything from the stage CSV. Okay, so everything has been removed and I'll see like, okay, I was just doing something. So now if I'll see there is no file, if I'm going to run the list command, there is no file. Okay, I need to do a copy into stage. So from where I need to take the data from existing table and dump into the stage. Why? So that people can take it, people can dump it into the stages. That is not just going to be the internal name stages, but it can be the inter it can be the external name stages also. Means what if my teammate wants me to uh, send some data to the AWS S3 or Azure or GCS, I can use this copy into command. Okay. For that, I need to write copy into stage CSV from any table. Now table, I can mention anything like anything means like from any other schema. So let's say I'm going to take it from the Snowflake sample data. And I know from this one schema and the table name is customer. Let's see what will happen. So when I executed this command, I got three by rows unloaded. How many record? 150k. These were the input bytes and these were the output bytes. Let's look at the list now. List is CSV. And that means I got three files. Now, first thing, every name is going to start with data and it's going to be like 00012020 because the files are going to be copied into the parallel where the number of threads are available at that stage these are going to create these the number of copies over that, like into the stages now what if i want this name should be something familiar or something different because i'm copying the customer data so the name should be something like customer so in that case what you're going to do you're going to write copy into stage csv and then slash customer data and then from you're going to take this one also i do not want multiple files i just need a single file then i'm going to use single equal to true that is one parameter which i'm going to use here single equal to true now one more thing because I'm not specifying any data type. So if I'm going to rerun this, I will not be getting any data type for this customer. Look at this list a CSV. So I got this customer data, which is a single file only because I made it a single equal to true. Now, if this external stays, if this is an external stays means I have created the stays on AWS or in, uh, as you are in something then the limit is the 5 GB that is the maximum size of the file you can load it 5 GB but what is the maximum uh, file size is by default let's try that 
okay so there is single equal to true and then other property i do have is max file size this max file size by default i have is 16 mb so if my file if my table data is less than 16 mb then i can simply set it single equal to true but if it is more than 16 MB, then I have to change this max file size and I going to need it to change it from 16 MB to up to 5 GB in case of external stays. So you can mention this max file size is going to be like something. I mean, you can definitely check the Google to uh, find out how many bytes is going to make a 1 GB, 2 GB, 3 GB. Okay. So I'm not going to use that max file size, but what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to write customer data dot CSV. And when I'm going to execute this one, now I will be having a separate file, which is customer dot CSV. Okay. This is one parameter. Now, what if your teammate is saying, Hey, 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 what have you done? Actually, I just refreshed my customer data. So whatever you are pushing to stays is not up to date. So can you please read in the command again? Can you please take the same like a data backup onto the stays again? So what you're going to do, you will be running the same command again, but this will throw an error that the file already exists. That means now you have to use a different parameter, which is overwrite equal to true. Okay, so we have seen two parameters, single and overwrite. Now, what if I wanted to know that there should be a proper query ID in my file name? Okay, I want a proper query ID in my file name. So for this, I will be taking but this time I'm not going to use this single equal to true I will be using this parameter which is include query ID and see what this is going to do when I write include query ID equal to true in fact this is not required now let's see what will happen When you are going to do that list stays csv and see that if you will look at it they have created list stays csv customer data now when you are going to do that then it is going to take data and then the query id and after that it is going to take the file name like 0000, 000, 000, 010, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 like that you see here because earlier this would these with the file got created automatically but when you write include query id it is going to add the query id also but this will not work when you are going to use single equal to true let's see that if i'm going to write single equal to true will it work now invalid property combination okay so whenever you want to use include query id make sure you are not using single equal to true okay so we have seen three major property now my manager is saying that vishal i have one table that table is having one million of record but when i'm creating the cop when when i'm just copying this data into the stages what exactly it is doing is that it is creating like 10 20 copies but i want to know the number of records available in every single file that means he wants me to get him the details that how many records we have in this particular file, how many records I do have in this file or in this file. Then the one approach is that I'm going to open this file, going to take it into the Excel, going to find out the count and then going to give him. But what if there are 200 files? Am I going to do the same thing for the entire day and the second day? No. For that, Snowflake is pretty smart. In this case, you have to use another property called here. This is detailed output. So you're going to take this detailed output equal to true. And this time I'm not going to take customer data. I'm taking Katrina care and let's see that. 
Now when I take this one, you see here in my output, I got file name, file size and the row count in every single file here. Okay, so this first one in 030 is having 30,000 record, in 75, it's a 45,000 record. So if anyone is asking you to find out the row count in every single uh, like file created at the stage, then you're going to use detailed output. So we have seen include query ID, detailed output, override, single and max file size. Now last one is the validation mode and that is the common with the copy into table also. What it is going to do before copying the data, before unloading the data at the target means at the stage, it is going to validate or it is going to tell you what exactly or the, like uh, what exact data is going to be unloaded at the stage. Okay, so let me do one thing. I'm going to do remove or not not going to remove actually will be you will be like uh, able to understand. I'm going to take not detailed output this time. I'm going to take validation mode equal to return rows so if you are going to write return rows here then what it is going to do and this time not katrina cat it's going to be my megan fox my favorite and when you are going to do run execute this command what will happen it is going to give you it is going to return all those records whichever is present in this customer table and you see here it's a 150k Okay, now you see here it is C0, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 is like it's coming as a column name, not just C0, C1. But what if you just wanted to find out the column name, then for that you need to use header equal to true and let's see what I will get. In this case, what will happen that this is going to include the data, this header equal to two means, this is going to include the column name also into the cop, into this file. Now there will not be any file in my stage named of the Megan Fox here. You see here, I still have 11 files. There is no because it just validated and going to give you that how many uh, like uh, which all records is going to be copied. So in this case, what you can do, you can simply run these thing, these two statement or these two. That's it. Now you will be having one file which is Megan Fox something like that. You see, fourteen files are there. This one. So that's how you can copy the data into the stays from table. Now, one thing which is very important from the Snow Pro Core certification point of view also, that at the time of unloading the data, supports only JSON, Parquet, and CSV, TSV file formats. That is very important and I'm sure you, some of you is going to see that in your Snow Pro course certification exam. Okay. Now one last thing that what if I have one internal named stays and one on AWS S3 stays. I wanted to move all the file from here to here or I want to do the reverse or let's say the requirement is AWS to Azure or Azure to AWS. So in this case, I will come to this copy files. This was added in the month like last year only around couple of months back that it allow you to copy file from one stage to another stage. But it should be named stage only. So as you can see the combination internal name stays to internal name stays, external stays to internal name stays, internal name to external or external to external. What would be the syntax? A simple copy files into stays one from stays two. After that you have one more parameter also like you can take which particular file you wanted to copy. So you can write copy files but before that let me create one stage 
create stays and that stays is going to have a stays data let's say this one and now i'm going to take this one only oh my bad mm, let's do one thing yeah just going to put semicolon here so this create stays stays data that stays is created now if you look at it there is no files in this stays why because we just created right but if i do that copy files into from which file from which stage from our this is stage stage underscore csv and look at one thing when you executed this command this is going to copy all the files into this stays data okay now if you will run this list is stays data it is going to have all those files whatever we do have in the stays csv okay i hope you understand this copy into uh, command into the details so we have three things one is a copy into stays copy into table and copy files into the stage from stage okay if you really like this uh, these exercises and the video please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends thank you for watching